I'm very much a numbers-oriented guy. This is especially true in my professional life where I use objective data to make decisions. For high power, I have lots of spreadsheets tracking my scores and groups over the years. But I've never been one to quantify my shooting equipment because marksmanship has always been a higher priority. Recently, I had the opportunity to borrow another competitor's Garmin chronograph. I used it at a couple of matches and got data on both my short line and mid-range ammo. Let me show you what I found. First, let me detail the load I used for this. The brass is Starline 5.56mm with a Remington 7.5 primer. There's 23.7 grains of Reloader 15, which was trickled and weighed for each round. Topping things off is a Berger 80.5 grain bullet. Towards the end of the season, I fired this load through the barrel that I have been using all year, a Krieger 1 in 7.7 .7 twist. At this point, the barrel had about 2,100 rounds on it. For slow fire prone, I set up the Garmin chronograph and fired my 22 shots. A few weeks later, I shot another match, but this time I used a newly rebarreled upper. This one had a Geisley 1 in 7 twist barrel. As before, I set up the Garmin and shot slow fire prone like I normally would. Two sighters and 20 shots for record. Afterwards, I compared the data from the two sessions. Before I show you that, let me make a comment on my expectations. I would not expect the velocities from two different barrels to be the same. So, my assumption was that they would vary by, say, 20 or 30 feet per second. Additionally, because the ammo was loaded the exact same way, I would expect the variance from shot to shot to be pretty similar as well. Let's see how close my assumptions were to reality. The first thing I noticed was the difference in the mean velocity. I never expected these to have a dissimilarity of 109 feet per second. While the magnitude of the Krieger velocities were always higher than the Geisley, I looked at the extreme spread between the fastest and slowest shots for each. The fact that the Krieger had 55% smaller extreme spread surprised me, especially when the ammo was loaded in the exact same manner between barrels. Likewise, the velocity standard deviation was more than I expected between them, with the Krieger standard deviation being half of the Geisley. Let's put aside that data and look at something else. At that match with the Geisley barrel, I used the Garmin in the short line stages as well. The only difference was that I shot two ammo configurations.
In both cases, the components were the same. A Starline 5.56 case with the Remington 7.5 primer and a Sierra 77 grain Match King bullet on top. But the Reloader 15 powder differed slightly between them. In the standing and sitting stages, I used a load where the powder was dropped using my Dillon 550 powder measure. The nominal charge was probably about 23.5 grains, but I know that the Dillon gives us three standard deviation variants up and down of about 0.3 grains. So the amount of powder in thrown charges might be as low as 23.2 and as high as 23.8. For rapid fire prone, the components were the same, but each charge of Reloader 15 was weighed and trickled to 23.7 grains. The mean velocities don't matter much here, as I was more curious about the standard deviations. While these were 22 and 16 for the thrown charges, the weighed and trickled charges had a standard deviation of 19, exactly halfway between the thrown groups. I was expecting better from loads that were so carefully assembled. Another way to look at this is to combine both groups of thrown charges into one data set of 44 measurements. I like to look at three standard deviations above the mean and three standard deviations below. This spread will cover 99.7% of future loadings. It also shows how different two extreme loads could be. In the case of loads dropped using the Dillon powder measure, this Six Sigma spread is 132 feet per second. Is that significant? I'm not sure because I don't know what this velocity difference looks like on the target. To be honest, I was just playing with this Garmin to see what numbers my rifle and ammo would generate. But it did show me some things that I didn't expect. To review. Is it expected to have velocities from two different barrels vary by over 100 feet per second? Is it expected for one barrel to have much better extreme spread and standard deviation numbers than another barrel? Is it expected to have variation of trickled charges be not much better than thrown charges? If you have some insight into these questions, leave them in the comments. I'm curious if these numbers raise any eyebrows, or if they're just par for the course.